G'day, my name is Brendan. I'm here to talk about VMStat, which is a performance tool for Unix operating systems. The version I'm talking about is for the Solaris-based operating systems, including Solaris 10, Illumos, and Joint's SmartOS, as well as others. VMStat is used by system administrators and anyone else who's interested in the overall health of a system. It's a course view. You can think of it as the view from 20,000 feet. It's useful to run and consider for a few seconds before diving into deeper tools. To run it, you run VMStat at the command line. You don't need to be logged in as root or the system administrator. Um, here I've run it as, as the Brendan user. It has two optional arguments, the interval and the count. I'll run it right now. You'll see the first line of output is printed really quickly. Um, it hasn't waited for the one second interval like it has for the others. The first line of output is the summary since boot. The system may have been booted for 10 days or 100 days. That's letting me know the averages um, for the entire time that the system's been up. Some people say skip the first line if you're interested in the system of uh, the health of the system now. I find it useful to consider the first line so that you can see is the system getting worse or is it getting better? Uh, the remaining lines are the interval averages. So these are one second uh, averages we've got. What I'd like to do is I'd like to quickly talk about the um, key columns you read to understand CPU and memory usage. And then what I'll do is I'll go through all the columns one by one and explain them. So from CPU and memory usage, for CPU usage, there are four columns I'd like you to uh, understand to start with. Starting from the end, we've got CPU, user, system, and idle. These, you'll see how it's a little ragged. They don't quite line up. So you do need to, to sometimes count or use your eyeballs. These three columns should add to 100%. And what they are is they are the percent averages for the entire system for that interval across all CPUs. Just to uh, read the last line I've got here, I've got 21% in user time, 14% in system time, and 65% idle. That's, that's the average across all CPUs for that interval, which was one second. What they mean, user time is time in user land code or time uh, running process code. Processes on the system include applications like Apache, MySQL, uh, things you write in PHP, Python, Java, and so on. That's your code, application code. System time is the percent of CPU time running uh, code inside the kernel or the system. That includes system calls, uh, asynchronous kernel threads that do various housekeeping tasks, and also time spent servicing interrupts. And of course, the last column is idle, which is the uh, percent of time that the CPUs weren't doing work. Here, I've got 65% for that interval in idle, which means I've got plenty of headroom. Although, I do need to bear in mind that this is a very, uh, very coarse way of understanding CPU usage because I can't see what's happening per CPU. I may actually have a CPU problem where one CPU is hot and I have, have uh, CPU load is not balanced. I need to use other tools like MPStat to see how the CPUs are balanced per CPU. I said there are four columns to consider for CPU usage. Th that it's the last three. The fourth is the first one printed here, which is kthreadr. kthreadr is the number of threads in the ready-to-run state on the CPU dispatcher queues. I've drawn a small picture to explain it here. So CPUs can be running threads, and they'll also have threads that are backed up waiting for their turn on the CPU. Uh, these are called CPU dispatcher queues. I've drawn three threads here queued up waiting for their turn on the CPU. So if I was to take a snapshot right now, I would say the number of threads that are ready to run and waiting their turn is three, uh, just like I've got a three printed out there for VMstat. This is, in some ways, it's a measure of CPU saturation, uh, how, much, uh, how much extra work is being asked of the CPUs that they can't perform because they're already fairly busy. The last three columns are uh, helping us understand CPU utilization. And so this column is helping us understand CPU saturation. How can we have saturation at the same time as idle time? What, to, what we need to remember here is this is a one second average, and a lot can happen within a second. So I can have a, a, 
a burst of events where a number of threads wake up wanting to do work at the same time, and they need to queue. They then get dispatched and executed, and then for the remainder of that second, you have idle time. So this is why you can have what appears to be saturation and yet idle during the same interval. Uh, I should also note, these last few columns, the CPU user system and idle, these are very accurate measurements. These use uh, CPU microstates, um, which is a Solaris, a, a more recent Solaris feature. The first column, the K thread R, is only sampled once per second. So it's fairly coarse, uh, and you'll see a lot of fluctuation. To get a better understanding of that, you can use D-trace, uh, and you can measure that much more accurately. Uh, you can also, uh, if you know how to interpret uptime's load averages, that's another much more accurate way of understanding CPU saturation. So those are the four columns for understanding CPU usage at a VM stat. It's just a very broad view before you dive into deeper tools. For memory usage, the there are four key columns I'd like you to consider uh, before we get into, into deeper things. They are, under the memory section, we've got swap. This field could be renamed to uh, virtual memory free, I guess. What it's actually showing you is the kilobytes of virtual memory that are available. When this goes down to zero, malloc's fail. So if I'm an application, I'm requesting memory, I'm calling malloc and that fails. It's up to the application how that responds. Sometimes it'll, it will spit an error and say, out of memory error. When that goes down to zero, uh, it causes pain for applications. If I'm a system administrator, what I need to do is either tune those applications or add more physical disk-based swap devices, which expands virtual memory. So one of the advantages, one of the of many advantages of virtual memory and why Unix-based operating systems use this concept of virtual memory is to uh, pretend to extend the reach of DRAM by backing it up with this second level of cache. Free is a measure of uh, DRAM free. So this is the actual main memory of the system. When that goes low, the system pulls in uh, various routines to recover memory back to applications, which includes paging and swapping. We generally don't like to see that get too low. We don't like to see that get into the, the single digit megabyte range. Um, but it depends on how much, uh, how many gigabytes of DRAM there are in the system. That does scale uh, when it gets to the pain point. So swamp is virtual memory free. And when that goes down too low, malloc will fail. Free is DRAM free. And when that goes down too low, the system will page and it will swap. And the performance of applications applications will get worse because they're rattling the disks. How that works specifically, and this is the third column I'd like you to consider for memory usage, is SR for scan rate. Uh, the columns are a little bit ragged, so I'd have to count them out. Scan rate is the number of pages scanned during that interval. And it's a way that the system uses to recover memory when there's memory pressure. It's also an older mechanism. So if you pick up a, a textbook on, on Unix performance and you're reading about VMstat, uh, it, it may talk about scan rate in terms of being a, a, a primary indicator of memory pressure. However, since Solaris has had other features added to it, like the cyclic page cache and the ZFS arc, scanning doesn't happen as frequently now. If it does happen, it means the systems become very desperate at trying to free memory. I've drawn up a diagram to help us understand this. So uh, going down this diagram is what happens when main memory on the system runs low. So memory requests come in, and we can uh, satisfy them from a free list. And when that's exhausted, a cache list. A free list is a list of free memory that the kernel doesn't need to search for. It knows where it is. A cached list is a list of memory that's, that has useful file system pages cached. Uh, but it can reuse that if an application needs it for memory. Once those get exhausted, we then start scanning for memory. And that's the op operating system scanner. And it's uh, identifying memory pages that are not recently used. And we'll then uh, page them out to disk. I've used the term page a bunch of times. A page of memory is uh, either 4 kilobytes or 8 kilobytes, depending on the architecture. Usually 4 kilobytes for x86 or 8 kilobytes for Spark. Uh, there's also something called multiple page size support I'll get to in part two. So the page scanner, if you're at this point, 
you'll see scan rate. If you see scan rate that's consistent on modern versions of Solaris, you have a serious memory problem and you need to look at tuning the applications so that they're not consuming too much memory or identifying if there is an application that's abusing memory. Uh, something that's good for that is dtrace so that you can identify memory usage in the applications. Or you can just run PRStat and look at the RSS column. If page scanning doesn't cut it, if it is scanning for pages and, and what will, it will do is it will copy them out to the physical, uh, physical swap device. If that page of memory is dirty and there's no other copy of it, uh, if, it's not, uh, if it doesn't exist on disk elsewhere, then it has to copy it out to the physical swap device. It may have, it may have been born by, by reading it from disk, such as an executable page from user bin ls or something like that. So sometimes when it scans for memory, uh, and it frees memory, it doesn't necessarily need to copy that out to disk. So uh, it only needs to copy it out if there's no copy already out on disk. But when that whole mechanism starts to fail, and we're st we still have memory pressure, we get into swapping. Swapping, and this is also kind of going back in time in archaeology for Unix, swapping is where a, an entire thread will be copied out to the physical swap device. At that point, things are getting really desperate. Uh, and the performance of applications can be very bad. You'll see it here in VMstat. The W column, that's the fourth and final field I wanted to mention for VMstat memory usage. W is the count of threads that have been copied out to the physical disk-based swap device. What happens generally is you log into a system and you'll see W is uh, 56, and it says that for every line. It means the system's been very bad in the past, and it's copied entire threads out. Those threads will stay there until a syscall wakes them up or they need to do some more processing. And then they'll uh, enter DRAM if there's resources available. Uh, there's a couple of other things I've drawn up here on this diagram to mention quickly. There is something worse than swapping called hard swapping where the kernel can drop modules. But um, you shouldn't get to that point unless the system's in a huge amount of pain. ZFS also does complicate things further. And VMstat, VMstat as a tool itself was invented decades ago. It has not really been updated for ZFS, so many of the columns don't make sense for ZFS. In terms of memory, v uh, ZFS will cache a lot of file system pages in the ARC, the adaptive replacement cache. So you may end up having, say, 16 gigabytes in the ARC. That's not reflected in the free memory column for this version of VMstat even though in a way it is free memory. In a way, if your application needs it and starts to grow, it can take memory from the ZFS arc if it's simply there to be cached. So that, uh, that should really be part of free, uh, but at the moment this version of VMstat doesn't, doesn't do that. So ZFS will actually shrink the arc uh, when you're starting to run out of memory. Um, and there are some tunable parameters so you can change that behavior. Uh, once you get to the point where you're scanning consistently, the, Z, the ZFS arc has probably been shrunk to almost nothing. So uh, that's why I've drawn this kind of high up in the diagram. So when you start to have memory pressure, you'll hit up the free list, you'll hit up the cache list. The ZFS arc can also shrink. So by the time you get to scanning, you've already exhausted these mechanisms to free memory. So scanning is very bad, and it's a very good way of looking for memory saturation, because if you are scanning, you've been in a lot of pain. But do look for these columns first, um, free memory approaching, uh, becoming lower. So those are the key columns for understanding memory usage from VMstat and also CPU usage. In the second part, what I'd like to do is go through each of these columns in detail uh, so that you can understand them. Thanks for watching. <laughs>